What is all that stuff up there? Afrodisiacos. Afrodisiacos? What's seven times without pulling out? LPM. Levántate pájaro muerto. This is like natural Viagra, right? Natural, Viagra natural. What's the más fuerte? Rompe calzón. El rompe calzón, tomas una copa, yeah. le pone muy fuerte, y tu esposa rompe su calzón. Popping a boner already, man. <laughs> I've been walking around horny, man. I got no one to enjoy it with. <laughs> you ready to go? <laughs>
One of the many reasons that we do Amazonian cuisine is to let people know what we have in the Amazon. There are new things, new ingredients, new flavors, new territory, new climate. And behind these ingredients are amazing people, communities that have a lot of knowledge, that uh, are very humble, very poor sometimes. You learn a lot from these people and it makes you question the way you live. And I think that's very interesting. So we basically got here as, a, uh, as an oil barrel with rebar on the top, fish from the Amazon, from the river, leaves and bananas. Put it together, and we got a restaurant, man. Maybe we should open up one of these. Uno, por favor. Uno. Uno madre. Uno. Uno maduro. And they wrap it up. No need for paper, man. That's environmentally friendly right there. Plastic, not so friendly. There it is, free trade. That's pretty cool. Piping hot. You ready? Yeah, that's it. Turtle soup, man. Very French. Very French. I was just going to say that. You see it on every brasserie, man. It always be the turtle soup, man. Check these little guys doing the mise en place. That's a fucking big turtle, man. ¿Cuántos años tiene esa tortuga, Cholo? Eight years, that turtle. Why they kill him, man? So they make the soup and then they put the soup inside and boil it a little bit. You know, I'm into the exotic shit, but more like, you know, Diet Coke instead of a Coke. That's, that's exotic. Okay, let's sit and have some fish. Let's do it, man. What do we have here? This is called Sabalo. That is a, like a carp family. <laughs> this is very fatty. This is the other fish, the piranha. The techniques are very simple, natural. You need to use your hands, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you gotta feel the bones. Yeah. The first time I came to Iguitos, yeah. I came because I was impressed with the paiche. And at that time, nobody knew about the paiche. Nobody. And that's where I, I met Santiago. He was selling me some paiches. He was growing paiche for the local people in Iquitos. Before anybody else, yeah. There was a demand, but he filled the demand for the market in, yeah. in Iquitos. And you took it to Lima. I take paiche and put it in my suitcase and travel with it. <laughs> I've taken it to Japan, to Italy. I've taken it to Australia. Oh, shit. So you are definitely a, a, a culinary pioneer, taking some indigenous products and techniques and preparations that they use and you're bringing it into the city and showing everybody yeah. how, to, how to do it. Like you were saying, we are building the market. We are, we are creating the market. Yeah. The guy Santiago, we went to his farm where he's raising them and also releasing them into the wild to keep the population in the wild going up. This is a paiche pond. So is it like pache hunting or are we just going to cast a net? They, they have a big net. They throw the net, and then they... This is not really too fair for the pache. There's one. Yeah. His one just came up. You said they have lungs and gills? Lungs and gills, yeah. So are they mammals, or they're, they're, they're fish? They're fish, fish, but they are uh, they have double respiratory system. Double respiratory. It's a, it's a very unique it's, species. It's uh, like very ancient. It uh, hasn't evolved. Yo he sido el depredador más grande de la Amazonía. Maté miles de paiches. ¿Cómo matabas? ¿Cómo los sacabas? Los sacábamos. Bueno, yo los maté con arpón. Con arpón, ¿no? En, por noche los mataba 100, 120 paiches. Por noche. At night. Ahorita en mi Amazonía ya prácticamente el paiche se está exterminando. Desapareció. Desapareció. Y tú, y tú decidiste Pero ahora yo, criarlos. Yo tengo la capacidad para llenar mi Amazonía con paiches. ¿Hace cuánto tiempo estás tú haciendo esto? Ya. Yo tengo acá más o menos 25 años. 25 Pero... años. Oh, yeah, they're in their net, man. Right, 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 right. 
All right, here we go. We're getting close to the pitcher catching time. You don't think it's going to actually happen. All of a sudden, next thing you see is a 400-pound fish, you know, out of a basically a puddle and like back behind the guy's ass. <laughs> it's, it, was, it was incredible. And it's, it's the largest fish in South America, freshwater fish. Yes, it's the second largest freshwater fish in the world. In the, the first world. one is the uh, beluga sturgeon. The beluga sturgeon. Ooh, right. And this one is the second one. And they grow up to like 450 pounds. Yes. Eight feet long. Y soy el pionero reproduciendo al paiche en la Amazonía. Eso es importante. Eso es importante. Yo puedo repoblar mi Amazonas. Pasa, yo exporto las crías al mundo. Yo vendo a todos los países asiáticos. Vendo a Japón, a China, a Taiwán, a Corea. Vendo las crías. Yo sé que este es el futuro del mundo y podemos salvar el hambre del mundo. You know, now food is such a powerful tool that we can actually make a difference in markets and with the way people purchase or don't purchase extinction of food or not extinction of food. It's, it's an amazing position and we're to yeah. be in right now. Quite a fiesta, man. Here guys, check this out, man. Here we go. Are those, are those the grubs? Yeah. I want to pick one up, man. Yeah, they look really physical. You know, yeah. like they're meaty. Yeah. It's a lot of gooky in there in the middle of those things, man. I guess that's why when they cook them up, they cook a lot of that softness out. But it's wild. Look, they're still they're still moving on the on the, on the grill. The local name of this worm is suri. It's suri. Suri. This suri comes from a palm tree. Uh huh. When we used to see uh, palm trees on the ground, you yeah. know, we used to hear, when you hear something like Yeah. If you open it up, you will see those coming out of the palm trees. Okay. Tu come esta? Damn. He's got like grub juice on his cheek, on his chin. How would you describe the way the people eat in, in Iquitos? You were talking it's survival. About you know, it's amazing because I think that they they look at food as as nutrition and survival. And what about this cutting again? So remember, I, I told you about the, the amount of bones the fish has. Yeah. That's how they process the, the fish here to break the bones. So they cut it like that. It's called retalia. Yeah, they got a nice. Okay. And what happens then when you eat it? You don't feel the bone? You don't feel the bones. Motherfucker. And this is, uh, <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. You know about cashew, no? Cashew yeah. nut? Yeah. When you eat the nut, you're eating the fruit, but here in our Amazon, we don't eat the nut. We eat the we flower, eat the, the peduncle. Wow. <laughs> I think the most amazing thing was that I've seen maybe 150 things that I've never seen or tasted before in my life. Comida? Semilla. That's wild. I don't know what to do with it, man. You know henna, like yeah. uh, natural yeah. dye? Yeah. This is henna fruit. It's called Wito, it stinks. It smells like Ooh. poof. It's funky, it's funky. It's funky, funky, funky. These two fruits are like the most important fruit for the economy of the Amazon. This is called Cocona. This one is a snake fruit. It's a palm fruit. That one is called uh, Camu Camu. This fruit has the most vitamin C of all fruits in the world like 30 times more than orange. It's a super fruit, you know? Yeah. A lot of vitamin C. Yeah. You know, people would just come off the river in a boat with things that even the local people have never seen before. They just caught them and they brought them to the, to the market, which was the wildest market I've probably seen in, in my life. This is not the Lyon market, man. Yeah. What is what that? What the fuck is that? I don't know. Are those piranhas? Turtles, man. Is that an alligator or is that a hippo? That's an alligator, man. It smells like shit. I was just in Bangkok. This is crazy. You want to know what a human being looks like when you open it. There it is. First time I've seen the dead monkey. Native people, they, they still they, eat that. They eat that. But uh, these, these guys come from uh, timber guys. They go to 
but you know trees, yeah. they also shoot animals. And they shoot it. And they smoke them and they bring them to here. So. That, that was shot? They shoot it? Of course. Yeah. It's illegal. Yeah. It's totally legal. Yeah. They don't have a, a reason to, to sell this. It's prohibited. And yeah. I hate that. I hate it. <laughs> Rotting meat. Ah. I would say the conditions are less than sanitary. Beef hearts, man. A lot of tripe, livers, spleens, kidneys. Everything's here, man, at like 80 degrees. Wonder what the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene would say about this. <laughs> they would have a field day here. You guys eating his own product? You guys eating his own product? Nice way to have breakfast. People in, in Iquitos like smell. They like oh, the fermentation. The fact that the meat is old, they don't like fresh meat. They don't, they don't, they like, don't like, like it. Fish. For them, fresh meat or fresh protein doesn't have flavor. No flavor, they say. Yeah, what, is there it has to be it? a little bit fermented. Is there a word for it? Uh, yeah, guanyo guanyo. Guanyo guanyo. Guanyo guanyo is when, when it's really fermented, it's guanyo guanyo, and that's when people like it more. Unbelievable. Well, thank you so much. We really, 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 really appreciate it. You're welcome. Dude, you You're were welcome. Thank you were the best fucking host. You're welcome, man. Of the fucking jungle. I hope you enjoy Peru and... Thank you so much, man. And the Amazon. Hope to see you again here. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Iquitos. You. Signing off tonight, being frank, Iquitos, Peru. I think Gaston probably summed it up best, or it resonated with us when he said that I do this to make people happy. And you and I creatively make people happy. And that's something that we believe in our hearts that we want to do is creatively make people happy. And it's great to see, you know, all these different chefs that we met on this trip that they're all doing it in their own way. <laughs> Let's go to Toto's house, man. Look at them, they're having fun over there. They're having a happy hour, man. We're gonna dance. Have a little drink, some coca leaves. You have to come to Peru, let yourself go, and we're seeing stuff, we're seeing different concepts, we're seeing different flavors, and also the relationships. This kind of satisfies our international inspiration. It's just an amazing, unbelievable place to, to visit and ex experience, you know? And we were right, really fortunate to see it the way we saw it. Yeah, it's, it's great to be frank in Peru. San Paolo, Atala style. Triple A, action Alex Atala. He was like, this is my normal Sunday. She's got some really good moves. Cooked at his house with his best friends. Yeah. I want to be a friend. <laughs> <laughs> good day to be a human. Bad day to be a scallop. Ha, 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 ha.